if you're someone that is thinking of studying a medical laboratory science course this video is also for someone that wants to know what happened in the hospital like in the laboratory why are the doctors always requesting for blood samples urine sample what are the things that goes down on these samples when they are being taken to the laboratory hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you are seeing my face for the very first time hi my name is ayamide i film about lifestyle career self-development and every other good stuff if you're new here please do subscribe to my channel to check out some of my other videos if you're a returning subscriber hey loves how are you doing thank you for always coming back thank you for always staying tuned in today's video as you guys can tell from the title i'm going to be talking about branches of medical laboratory science if in case you don't know i am a medical laboratory scientist and i I like to talk about my career once in a while you get what i mean this video is for two set of people or two category of people number one if you are if you are someone that is thinking of studying a medical laboratory science course this video is also for someone that wants to know what happened in the hospital like in the laboratory why are the doctors always requesting for blood sample urine sample what are the things that goes down on these samples when they are being taken to the laboratory so today i am going to be giving you guys audits about the branches of medical laboratory science if this is something that you like to watch sit back relax and join me we have like different branches of medical laboratory science as a as a profession but i'm just going to narrow it down to the four major branches that we have so we have the microbiology we have the chemical pathology we have the hematology and we have the histo pathology don't be confused microbiology has to do with the study of microorganisms like the name implies microbiology this is where we talk about the parasites bacteria virus and fungi why hematology has to do with the study of blood and its tissue i mean tissue like when it comes to like bone marrow or the blood constituents the blood as it's as a component you get so histopathology has to do with the study of normal and abnormal tissue then chemical pathology also known as clinical chemistry deals with the study of the components of blood and also other body i'm going to be taking these branches one after the other number one is microbiology so what happened in microbiology laboratory microbiology laboratory which deals with the study of microorganism has to do with a whole lot of study in the body especially when it comes to like okay infection so this is where stool analysis is being done there can be culturing and sensitivity on this tool to be able to detect the kind of infection this patient is having whether most especially when it comes to like parasites also urine analysis seminal fluid analysis blood culture vaginal swab culture micro microscopy culture and sensitivity whereby the sample is being taken from the vagina we have the ear culture we have the sputum culture this culture is basically like done to detect growth of bacteria and also other things like the sensitivity which deals with like okay which drug is in case of growth whether it's a bacterial growth which drug which antibiotic is this patient going to use that is going to work for this patient that is what the sensitivity is about so csf analysis this csf analysis is mostly done when they are suspecting like meningitis especially in children why that test is also done why that test has to do with like the detection of salmonella bacteria which we all call it is commonly known as typhoid you know typhoid typhoid yeah so why that test malaria parasite test and so on and so forth hematology laboratory is an interesting part of medical laboratory this is where all the blood components and everything and all that is being studied so we in nematology laboratory this is where you get to know your wbc count hemoglobin level packed cell volume reticulocyte count platelet count all these things are blood constituents WBC is white blood cell which helps to fight against infection. Platelet is also known as thrombocytes which helps to deal with you know like clotting of the blood. Hematology is also where we also do like serology. This is where hepatitis B, C test is being done. Also retroviral screening which everybody used to call um, HIV test where you can know okay is this patient positive or negative for this particular virus you get cross matching is being done in nematology where blood transfusion is being done okay 
in, in case of a patient needing blood hematology is the lab where they will go and request for blood and then there is going to be like okay donor and recipient which is the patient now is their blood compatible can we give this person's blood to this patient is there not going to be any transfusion reaction after the transfusion is there no disease in this person's blood is it not going to affect this person you know all those things basically those are the screening and everything that is done for cross matching and blood transfusion also clotology clotology has to do with like the clotting factor of the blood protrubing time let me set an example let's say this patient this patient is going for surgery and the doctor wants to be sure that okay if i cut this patient and this patient is bleeding i want to be sure that after a while like in a few seconds the blood is going to stop or the person's blood is going to clot and the bleeding will stop you know that's a good thing compared to if the clotting factor of the person is prolonged and the doctor is taking this person into the theater for surgery and they are scared because by the time they cut the patient up the blood is not stopping when it's supposed to stop and this person is going to be continue like you know having continuous bleeding basically so clotology is the study of you know clots basically pathology is where you get to know your blood group genotype erythrocyte sedimentation rates let's say a patient or someone is going through a an infection or disease in the body and they want to know how intense or what is the rate at which this thing is affecting the patient's blood and other factors in the blood what is the level at which this thing is migrating is it like it is very intense or it is gradual is this patient even responding to treatment at all so that is what ESR is about, erythrocyte sedimentation rates, those things. So basically, those are the tests that have been done in hematology. Now to clinical chemistry or chemical pathology. This is my favorite part of medical laboratory science. This is the this is my favorite department in medical laboratory science because of how interesting it is to me. It might not be interesting to you, but it is very interesting to me. This laboratory deals with the study of blood components and other components in the body so let's say for example a patient is coming into the hospital and the doctor is requesting to take okay take this patient's blood sample to chemical pathology laboratory what are the things you're expecting to get from them number one is lft lft has to do with liver function test this is where they get to know the level of at which the liver is functioning it has to do with the study of the enzymes and some of the liver parameters where we have the bilirubin alkaline transferase alkaline phosphatase and all those things like that let me know boy with all those things but lft is a panel on its own like it has a lot of sub tests under it so if a lft is being requested there are a lot of things that are going to be done on that sam one sample so it's not just one thing so bilirubin is going to be done protein is going to be done album is going to be done and other liver enzymes urinalysis urinalysis is analysis that is being done on urine which can help with a point at which point at things like that is going wrong or going right in the body basically so as small as urinalysis can look it is a very important test in chemical pathology let's say for example a patient is coming into the lab and the urine is being collected urinalysis is being done and there is high level of glucose in the urine this shows that this person is likely a diabetic patient also you can see like protein in the urine let's say there's protein in the urine is also going to point towards okay let's go and do this person's lft let's say there is leukocytes in this person's urine you can say okay let's go for other tests maybe this person is having infection next one is going to be lipid profile lipid profile simply put let me just say the complete test that that has to do with like cholesterol you know cholesterol as the name implies all of us we used to say okay fat 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 okay things like that so that is what lipid profile is all about it also have like sub test under it where we have the triglyceride total cholesterol high density lipoprotein we have the low density lipoprotein and other parameters like that under lipid profile also we have rena test this rena profile has other soap test under heat this renal profile has to do with the kidney so where we do urea we do creatinine and other 
parameters like that. This test helps to know how functioning the kidney is. Also, hormonal profile has been done in, in the chemical pathology laboratory. Hormonal profile, this place you can get to know if how some of these um, reproductive hormones, the progesterone, the estrogen, luteinizing hormone, prolactin, and everything. It can also help to like detect disorder in hormones, basically. So, hormonal profile is also done. In the lab in chemical pathology laboratory also glucose there blood gas analysis and so on and so forth a lot of things have been done in chemical pathology which makes it very interesting so the last for today is histopathology histopathology is also very interesting histopathology is the study of tissues you know like the disease the normal the abnormal this is where you can know if a tumor is is malignant or benign so a lot of things are done on this tissue let's say for example a patient is coming into the hospital and then there is a tumor of this patient's body and it is being removed you know like surgery and it is being removed they want to know if this is cancerous if it is not cancerous then no cause for alarm but if it is cancerous there are other things so that they can know like line of treatment and other things to be done so when tissue come into the laboratory is the pathology laboratory like that there are some things that need to be done fixation embedding sectioning staining and other things procedures like that we also have like fine needle aspirates we have gynecological samples non-gynecological samples so this is where they will ask like ladies to also go for you know cervical smear all those things that you know surrounding everything like that so yeah that is that about branches of medical laboratory science there are a lot we have immunology we have virology we have histochemistry we have a lot like that but basically the major you know branches of medical laboratory science are the ones that i have just explained to you guys if you find this interesting if you want to know more about medical laboratory science stick to this channel drop a comment in the comment section subscribe like share and let me know what next you would like to see on this channel until next time that i'm going to be seeing my face again stay cool stay calm and be happy bye guys